Transition Diet Lesson 15 In the preceding lessons, you were taught the foods that are best, as well as those that are bad and which are the worst ones. You know the exact reason why and also what is going on in the system, what happens with good foods as well as with bad ones in the human body. You have learned that even the best foods, which have the highest, most vigorous healing properties, can become harmful, even dangerous in the beginning if not carefully used that they become mixed with the filthy mucus and poisons that they loosen up in the body, and thereby become poisoned, entering the bloodstream in this poisoned condition. Everything is perfectly performed by nature through evolutional, progressive changes, developments, and accomplishments, and not by catastrophes. Nothing is more incorrect than a mistaken idea that a decades-old chronic disease can be healed through a very long fast, or radically extended strict fruit diet. Nature's mills grind slow but sure. My experience of over 20 years, covering for the most part the extremely severe cases of all kinds of diseases, has proven that a carefully selected and progressively changing transition diet is the best and surest way for every patient to start a cure, especially for the average mixed eater. As long as wrong foods, foods of civilization, are partly used, I call it a mucus lean diet. Transition means the slow change from disease producing foods to disease healing foods, which I call the mucusless diet. The speed of elimination depends upon quantities and qualities of food, and can therefore be controlled and regulated according to the condition of the patient. The worst and by far the unhealthiest habit is the heavy breakfast. No solid food should be eaten in the early morning at all if you desire to secure the best results. It is permissible to take the drink that you are accustomed to, but nothing else. If you find this difficult to do in the beginning, you may drink again later on, so that your lunch is taken in the empty stomach. This is so very important that a number of light diseases can be cured by the so-called no-breakfast plan alone. This subject is more fully covered in Fasting Lessons 18, 19, 20, and 21. It is best that no more than two meals a day be eaten, even though the quantity you eat is as much as if three or even four meals were eaten. Later, when the stomach is cleaner, a small dish of fresh fruits when in season may be eaten for breakfast if desired. If possible, the first meal, lunch should be eaten between 10 and 11 in the morning, and supper not sooner than 5 or 6 in the afternoon. Another very important rule when eating for health is simplicity. In other words, do not mix too many kinds of food at one meal. Count the different number of items in the average meal of today, and the total will startle you. Never drink during a meal. If accustomed to a beverage with your meal, wait a short while after you have eaten before drinking. Soup should be avoided with meals as the more liquid taken, the more difficult for proper digestion. If a warm drink is desired, for instance, as a breakfast drink during the winter time, make a broth by cooking for a long time different kinds of vegetables, such as spinach, onions, carrots, cabbages, etc., and drink the juice only. Menus for the first two weeks. Lunch. A combination salad consisting of raw grated carrots or coleslaw or both. Half and half. And two or three spoonfuls of a stewed or canned vegetable such as green peas, string beans, or spinach. Add to this one of the following items, whatever is in season. Cucumbers, tomatoes, green onions, lettuce, or other green leafy vegetables, celery, etc., but only a sufficient quantity for flavoring. You may make an oil dressing according to your taste if desired, using lemon juice instead of vinegar, for flavoring purposes only. The rest of the meal should consist of one baked or stewed vegetable such as cauliflower, beets, parsnips, turnips, squash, etc. If you still feel as though you were hungry, you may eat a small baked sweet potato or one slice of toasted bran or whole wheat bread. Fats of any kind, including ordinary butter, are unnatural and therefore should not be eaten. However, should you crave fats, it is best to use peanut butter or some other nut butter on your bread. During the winter months, canned vegetables may be used when green vegetables are not available. Drink the juice separately in the morning and mix the green or string beans or spinach, etc., with the salad stock as described above coleslaw or raw carrots. The object of this menu is to supply the broom to provide means for mechanically cleansing the digestive tract by quantities of raw, baked, and stewed starchless vegetables. This may be called Eret's Standard Combination Salad, the intestinal broom, spoken of so frequently and so necessary for properly eliminating the stored-up poisons now being loosened during the body's house cleaning. Supper. Mix half and half. A stewed fruit such as applesauce, stewed dried apricots, stewed dried peaches, or stewed prunes, with some cottage cheese or very ripe bananas, mashed sweetened with brown sugar or honey to taste. The bananas would be for a less mucus or less acid stomach. Menus for the second two weeks. Lunch. First, a baked apple, 
applesauce, or other stewed dried fruit. After 10 or 15 minutes, a combination salad is suggested in the first menu. And bran or whole wheat bread toasted if still hungry. Cow butter should be gradually avoided and replaced by a vegetable or nut butter during the transition. By allowing the cooked vegetables to soak on the salad for 10 to 15 minutes, it serves the purpose of a dressing. Supper. A baked or stewed vegetable, as suggested in the first menu, followed with a vegetable salad made of lettuce and cucumber or raw celery or a little coleslaw. Menus for the third two weeks. Lunch, during the summer, there should be an exclusive fruit meal, one kind only. In the winter, a sweet dried fruit, for example, prunes, figs, raisins, or dates eaten with apples or oranges, or the dried fruits can be chewed together with a very few nuts, and then followed by the fresh fruits. If in the beginning this fails to satisfy, wait for 10 to 15 minutes and then eat a few leaves of lettuce or a cold vegetable either cooked or raw, but just a small quantity. Supper, a combination salad as suggested in the first menu, followed by a baked vegetable. Menus for the fourth two weeks. Lunch, fruits as in previous menus. Supper, first eat fruits, either baked or stewed or fresh, followed a little later by a cold cooked vegetable or better still a vegetable salad. If you find that you are losing weight too rapidly, the elimination should be slowed down by eating bread or potatoes after the vegetables. Should you feel an intense craving in the beginning for meat, a great desire returning which you cannot resist, then eat vegetables only on that day and no fruits. A dissolved mystery. The reason doctors and even naturopaths in general, as well as the lay person, do not believe in a fruit diet or a mucusless diet is simply this. Whoever experiments without experience with this kind of diet, whether sick or well, loses their faith immediately as soon as they experience a crisis and become what they believe to be seriously ill. That is to say, a day on which a great amount of dissolved waste, debris, mucus, and other poisons are taken back into the circulation. A day of great elimination. This produces at the same time a strong, almost irresistible craving for wrong foods and, strange as it may seem, the patient most strongly craves for the wrong food which was once his or her favorite. This is explained by the fact that nature is eliminating through the circulation the waste of these foods, and it is when they are in the circulation the craving and desire is naturally enough produced. This, then, is why it is of extreme importance that every meal of a diet of healing and a cleansing must leave the body as soon as possible. Being mixed with the loosened and dissolved poisons, they cause these uncomfortable conditions, a fact that has never been perfectly understood or explained. Certain foods prove more laxative under certain conditions. Therefore, eat the foods that you have personally found to be the most laxative in your own body. If you do not experience a regular bowel movement before retiring, always help with an enema, a laxative, or both. A natural laxative that helps, which you will undoubtedly find very efficient is eating a few dried prunes before the other fruits are taken. A very good aid to elimination, which can be used during the transition diet period, until the bowels are cleansed from the old sticky waste and until such time as the bowels act freely from the new diet, is a harmless herb vegetable compound perfected by myself and the most efficient intestinal broom and bowel regulator known. Formula for Eretz Intestinal Broom Quantities are given in parts so that you can prepare any amount that you require. Note, all ground ingredients should be about as coarse as loose tea. The powdered ones, about as fine as powdered sugar. These are all fairly common herbs, and you should be able to purchase them either at your health food store or from any herb shop. 6 parts ground senna leaves. 3 parts ground buckthorn bark. 1 part ground psyllium seed husks. 1 tenth part powdered sassafras root bark. One half part ground dark anise seed. One tenth part ground buchu leaves. One half part ground blonde psyllium seed. One eighth part powdered Irish moss. One eighth part granulated agar agar. Half part ground dark fennel seed. Mix the first three ingredients thoroughly. Then, combine the remaining seven real well and add this to the mixture. If you have a blender, it makes an ideal mixer for preparing this herbal formula. The intestinal broom is easy to use, usually a small amount, about the quantity that fits on half a teaspoon or less, swallowed with a glass full of water is sufficient for adults. It may be increased or decreased according to your own reaction. Other uses are sprinkled over salads or brewed as tea. A half teaspoon to a cup of boiling water, removed from heat, and allowed to steep for 10 to 15 minutes. It has a fascinating flavor. Yeah. 
Lesson 15, Footnotes Number 1. Non-fat fruits and green leafy vegetables are the best foods. Plant-based starches, grains, and fats are mucus-forming, but some of them may be used moderately during the transition phases. Meat and dairy are the worst foods and should be avoided at all costs. Number 2. It can be very helpful to use vegetable broth to extend a liquid fast. However, be mindful not to lose control and eat the cooked vegetables used to make the broth. Overcooked vegetables would not be the best foods with which to break any kind of fast. Number 3. When Arendt mentions coleslaw, he is referring to shredded cabbage without mayonnaise or dressing. Number 4. Arendt is against vinegar, although he does not explicitly say so. Twice he mentions that lemon juice should be used instead of vinegar for dressings. Some people believe that vinegar or fermented foods become alkaline after eating. Yet, Eret suggests that the only acidic foods that naturally become alkaline during digestion are raw, tree-ripened acid fruits. Although vinegar does not leave behind mucus, it is certainly acid-forming. It is also a common relapse trigger that causes a mucusless diet practitioner to crave worse mucus formers. Thus, it is best to avoid vinegar. Number 5. Many mucusless diet practitioners are able to use wheat products during the transition, with no major problems. But like lactose intolerance, people's ability to tolerate certain mucus-forming foods is beginning to wane. In recent years, more attention has been paid to the negative effects of wheat products as more people are starting to experience negative physiological reactions toward them. If you are sensitive toward wheat gluten, mucus, then avoid using it. Find bread that is made from gluten-free grains such as quinoa or buckwheat. However, avoid gluten-free items that use rice flour, potato starch, or other excessively gluey items. It must be stressed that if any kind of bread is used during the transition, it be very well toasted to aid in elimination. It should be 100% grain, sprouted is preferable, have as few ingredients as possible, toasted well, and eaten toward the end of your vegetable meal. Also, it is advantageous to not eat any toast in the vegetable meals that follow a fast, especially as you become more advanced. It is best that such meals be mucusless. Keep in mind, that wheat-free mucus-forming items may have the same negative physiological effects as those with gluten. If this is the case, then these kinds of mucus formers will need to be eliminated earlier in your transition. Number 6. Eret wrote the mucusless diet before the existence of modern-day supermarkets that offer a wide variety of fresh fruits and vegetables from around the world year-round. When available, it is always better to use raw fruits and vegetables for your transitional meals. Frozen fruits and vegetables may also be used when there are few fresh vegetables. If no fresh produce is available, canned items can be used as air it specifies. If used, be sure to obtain cans that have no preservatives, sugar, or corn syrup. Number 7. One surprising item that air it suggests people use in the early stages of the transition is cottage cheese. Although it is dairy and certainly mucus-forming, it eliminates relatively better than other dairy products. Yogurt also falls into this small category of transitional dairy products. This may be something to explore if you are coming from a particularly bad diet. However, it is certainly not a requirement. If you do not crave or feel the need to use cottage cheese, it is advisable not to do so, and it is certainly not something to be eaten after you have been transitioning on a diet for an extended period of time. Number 8. As a rule of thumb, it is advisable to transition to baked sweet potatoes as soon as possible. Number 9. The word enema refers to the injection of liquid into the rectum through the anus for the purpose of cleansing and evacuating the bowels. Many practitioners of the mucusless diet regularly use enemas and view it as a form of general hygiene. Enemas, or internal baths, will be discussed by Eret in forthcoming lessons. The word laxative refers to a food that stimulates the evacuation of the bowels. It must be stressed that Eret does not promote the use of unnatural laxative medications or store-bought saline enemas, such as fleet enemas. Many modern-day practitioners of the mucusless diet exclusively use lemon juice enemas. For detailed instructions about how to perform lemon juice enemas, see Spira Speaks, Dialogues, and Essays on the Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Spira. Number 10. Eret does not discuss the use of medicinal herbs in detail within the mucusless diet, except in this section pertaining to his intestinal broom formula. In the definite cure of chronic constipation, after discussing the danger of unnatural laxatives, Eret says this about his formula. Among numerous laxatives on the market, those of botanical origin are the least harmful. After many years of experience, I have prepared a special mixture of this kind. 
It has the advantage of removing the old, solid feces, obstructions, and mucus from the intestines without causing the usual diarrhea and constipation as an after effect. It is to be used in the beginning only, as an aid, and will not have to be used continually. As soon as the intestines are cleansed from the retained masses of feces and other obstructions, and the mucusless or mucusling diet is taken up, you will realize the truth of the previously stated facts, the definite cure of chronic constipation. Overall, ERIT supports the use of rational ancillaries that aid cleansing, such as herbs, sunbathing, exercise, colon irrigation, breathing exercises, etc. The criterion is that they help the practitioner safely eliminate constitutional waste and transition toward a mucus-free diet. It must be understood that these ancillaries do not perform the healing, but the body heals itself once cleansed of waste. It would not be advisable to rely too heavily or to develop a physical or mental dependency on any particular ancillary, including medicinal herbs. With the proliferation of modern medicine, people have become all too accustomed to getting immediate gratification from popping pills, and herbs should never be thought about or treated in this manner. True healing is not a quick fix, but a regeneration that comes from removing all waste from the body. Eret also does not advocate the use of any kind of nutritional supplements, as he does not believe the body can use unnatural, isolated chemicals that do not come from fresh fruits and vegetables. According to Eret, the primary power of healing comes from a mucusless diet with periods of rational fasting, or as Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food.